Hey, everybody, and welcome to In the Inside Pitch here at the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. I'm Ben Fredrickson alongside Jeff Gordon, here to talk a little Cardinals baseball. And, Gordo, I wanted to start off with what has become one of the hottest names in Cardinals camp. We didn't see him coming, but here he is, John Nagowski. As of today, he's hitting 423 with a 571 on base percentage and a 654 slugging percentage. He's got two home runs. He's proven he can come off the bench and hit. He's proven he can play some outfield. He's he's not a lock for the Cardinals opening day roster, but he's making it hard to ignore. What have you made of the spring of a big John Nagowski? It's a hell of a story. A guy that was an independent ball, just kept going, kept coming. You know, I mean, if you can figure out how to hit, uh, give good at bats uh, as a part-time player and, and, it's, and stay locked in and mentally handle that job, if you can prove you can do it, I mean, that is a, those guys are hard to find. And he's battled a long time to earn this opportunity. If he can master it, it's going to be a heck of a story. And look, this team needs pop on the bench. If he can survive playing some outfield, if he can pinch hit, play first base once in a while, not going to need a lot of work over there. I think it's fabulous. I mean, every year you need to have a guy like that who's, who's dedicated his life to getting this opportunity uh, to take a run at it. Now, I mean, will he hold up? Who knows? But for as long as it lasts, it's going to be terrific. And, hey, if it works, I mean, these, a guy like him is a huge asset. Shades of Jose Martinez going on with, with John Nagowski. And I'm with you, man. I, I didn't think – if you asked me a week ago, I said there's no way this guy's making the team. He's got a minor league option left. You know, they can send him down and bring him up later if he continues to force the, their hand. But he's forcing their hand right now. At some point, it's worth taking the guy that, that, that everybody is happy to see make the team. And you're right. They do need power. He is proving he can stand in left field and, and not, look, not look terrible. Um, so, so I say, hey, if he keeps this up and finishes spring strong, then you, you find a place for him. And one way you could do it is because Harrison Bader is now on the injured list. This is going to make the Cardinals rethink their bench a little bit, Gordo. This gives new life to Lane Thomas, who has struggled this spring. Um, it gives Justin Williams that much more of a chance of making the opening day roster. He's left-handed. He's had a good spring with the bat. He's played more confident defense. Bader is out four to six weeks now with his forearm strain. What do you make of how the outfield competition could look by the time he comes back? Now Dylan Carlson starts in center field or Lane Thomas. Tyler O'Neill is going to be in left. We could see a variety of different guys in right or mixed around in the corners. Bader hadn't been hitting very well this spring before his injury and during it. Um, now you wonder, is he going to return to a starting spot a month from now? No, I mean, I would worry a lot if I'm Harrison Bader. I mean, this is – anytime I see platelet uh, rich – Injection, I think, well, you know, the, the knife is coming down the road. I mean, it, it's always serious when you have a level of strain that's in your elbow. I mean, it's going to be difficult for him to come back. He's got to go back, start over again, try to get a swing back. I could see him in the minors if he recovers fully, uh, if he can avoid uh, repairs, which is the first thing you have to worry about. If it's significant enough to sit out and to get that injection, then you worry about what's, what's next. You always do when you see that. Um, in the meantime, you know, Lane Thomas at worst probably gets a, a spot as a defensive replacement. Uh, and, you know, Austin and Justin could be a platoon uh, in, in right field. And, and O'Neill gets a full run at the job. You know, I, I, pieces fall together. And, again, out of independent baseball, you may have your left fielder who gets some at-bats in there too. So it's going to be uh, – well, this is say overall I'd say the scenario looks a lot better than it did a few weeks ago despite the fact that Bader's out because Bader wasn't hitting, but the competition has improved. You've seen some guys uh, get themselves in a better place for the start of the season. And so let's go see what they can do. It does speak a lot to the uncertainty of the Cardinals outfield that the day the starting center fielder goes on the injured list a week before the season, he's the most experienced outfielder in this group. And there isn't a five alarm panic in the camp. Um, the Cardinals feel like they have the depth to get through this and, and, and they might have a more offensively productive outfield. The defense will probably take a step back. I mean, go, Bader played gold glove caliber defense and center, but Carlson is a pretty good center fielder too. I think we're about to find that out for folks who don't know. We'll see. Very interesting wrinkle here. The Cardinals said they wanted outfield competition, Gordo. Now they actually have to have one. Um, it didn't seem like that at times this spring, but now they really do have one. And I think people are interested in how it shakes out. One thing we got to hit on before we run here, because I don't know if it's getting, if it's getting enough attention. The, the strength of this team will be its defense, but tied for first might be the, this bullpen. Um, the decision to move Alex Reyes to the bullpen, the power arms that are there now with Reyes, Helsley, um, you've got Henesis Cabrera, you've got um, Jordan Hicks back throwing, throwing 100. This bullpen, I think, could sneakily become one of the best in the, in the National League, if not all of baseball, once you factor in the effect of Tyler Webb, 
and and also Andrew Miller, who's going to be in a more a more realistic role now. This bullpen looks pretty good. Well, you've got multiple options to close. That's a good place to start. Uh, if Miles, if KK, if they can come back and be productive, that bumps uh, some additional depth down in. I mean, a, a Ponce de Leon could be like an Alex Reyes. It could be a multi-inning weapon. Uh, he could be more of a power pitcher instead of a, a, a full package pitcher, if that's how it plays out. They're just going to have a lot of moving parts. You're going to see guys going in and out of the rotation, in and out of different roles. But the, the good news is there's just a lot of good arms. And even if you when you push down past this group into uh, the Zach Thompson realm where you have uh, you have a couple of really good prospects that you're eager to get into actual games, maybe in our lifetime we'll have minor league baseball again, and you can, some of these guys can get some more, uh, some more polish. But, yeah, they, they probably go 15, 16 deep on the pitching side uh, easily, and they're going to need all those guys. So the bullpen will be fluid. The rotation could be fluid. The good news is it, they're not scrounging. These, these guys can all get the job done. So it's it's intriguing, and um, every day, you know, Mike Schilt's going to have, uh, I think, a, a plethora of options. Yeah, a good point. 13 pitchers, it sounds like, to start the season, but already five you can think of off the top of your head they could go grab and, and pull from either the satellite camp or the minors if they if they need to. Uh, that's a good point. A lot of teams don't have that kind of depth in their in their pitching staff. Um, so that's that's a positive right now. And we'll, I'm curious to see how this outfield competition shakes out down here in Jupiter in the final week. We'll have it all covered at stltoday.com. And we'll be with the Cardinals in Cincinnati when they open. Keep a lock on stltoday.com for that. And also check out Sunday's Post-Dispatch. We're rolling out our special section. We've all got bylines in there, columns, analysis, position reviews, a main story by our colleague Derek Gould that's great about Nolan Arenado and, and Paul Goldschmidt, how they become the cornerstones of this team. Check it out in Sunday's Post-Dispatch. For Jeff Gordon, I'm Ben Fredrickson. We'll talk to you next week, everybody.